Welcome to MySQL Lesson 9. This demonstration shows you how to set up binary logging and scheduled backups. Start by opening MySQL on your workbench. In the previous lesson, you were introduced to many of the option file tabs, but in this lesson, I will direct you to the file recovery and replication options, including the MyISAM and NODB tabs above. After clicking the My ISAM tab, you can scroll down and see My ISAM Recover options, which you can turn on. There are several parameters that you might select when setting up your My ISAM Recover options. Have a look at these if you decide to turn Recover on. There are good descriptions to the right of the options, and you can find more info in the MySQL online manual. Under NODB, there are other recover options down at the bottom. So scroll down and you can see NODB underscore force underscore recovery under the general section. Again, there are many options here that you might set up and you can look those up using the online manual. These are automatic recovery. And you can select these options by clicking apply below after you've selected them and then click Apply again on the preview screen. But what about making backups? You can schedule backups using the Windows Task Manager and binary log files. They're located under the Log Files tab. To enable the binary log, you would click Log-Bin and then type in the name that you want to prefix your bin files with. In my case, I selected my DBIN. Down below, you would click Apply to save these changes and click Apply again in the Configuration File Review screen. I'm finished here, so I'm going to close my window. First, I'll refresh the server so that I could review the result of using BinLog. BinLog only tracks changes, so I will use Shutdown and Startup of my server to refresh the bin log files. After the server restarts, I will run a quick query and then an insert to illustrate that the bin file was updated and opened. So follow along. I just used the workbench tool here to insert a fake student. By clicking the plus sign in the edit menu for the query, I can go below and type in the actual contents that I wish to insert. Then I click Apply and it will create an insert command. I can review the command for correctness and then apply again to execute that command. Now that I've done a query and actually added some information, I can go and check and see the name of the bin log file by doing show binary logs. This command shows it and there's the name of my binary log, my first one. If I actually want to see the contents of the log, I can go to the data directory and see that it's been created here. Notice that it has an index file. Binary logs are encrypted files, so there isn't much to see, but the MySQL manual section 5.2 covers many of the utilities that are used in processing logs and working with binary files. Be sure to check it out. I'm going to show you a simple method for creating backups that uses one of the MySQL client programs. Basically, you would set up a daily backup schedule of the database to run during your off hours. You would use MySQL Dump, which is the utility that the workbench uses to export databases. I showed you that in the last lesson. You'll start by creating a backup user. The backup user would be given privileges for backup admin, which includes the following event, lock tables, show databases, show view, and select. After checking the privileges, I'll click apply to add this user. In the next step, I've created a backups folder within my user local data directory that we used for PHP. In the user local data directory, I've added a MySQL backup.bat file that can be run by the Windows Task Scheduler. Let's take a look at it. Starting out, there is a comment that says to be sure and provide a database name as the first parameter. 
parameters are shown here as percent one, and then there would be a percent two and percent three and so on, if you needed more parameters. That's how bat files work. The first actual command is the path command. It will specify the path for the folder name that contains the executables for MySQL dump and other utilities. You'll need to change this to match your system. The command below there will call the MySQL dump program. You will provide your backup user, your backup password, which I've done here, and then the file name for the backups. That's where you want them to be stored. This file name will be formatted using some of the parameters from the current date, allowing the file names to contain year, month, and day, plus the database name that you provided as a parameter. Therefore, you'll have a backup for every day. Finally, here is the percent one at the end, which would pick up the SAMPDB database name that you would provide when you run this bat file. I've also provided some remarks below that show an example that you might decide to use instead of the year, month, and day in the backup name. For this course, it would be best to use a weekday backup format of only seven days instead of the 365. First, insert an REM in front of the MySQL dump command on line 9. Next, you uncomment the REM down below in line 13 where there's a MySQL dump command and change the same information you changed in the other MySQL dump command so that you have the correct backup user, password, and folder name. However, you would leave the backup file name alone, allowing it to create a file name that contains the day of the week, like so. You'll also need the percent one at the beginning and end instead of SAMPDB. After you've made the required changes, be sure and save those changes to this MySQL backup.bat file. So, we haven't yet run the MySQL backup.bat file, and notice here that the user local backups folder is still empty until the first time it runs. Optionally, let's test the bat file to see if it's working after you've made these changes. Open a standard Windows command line, type in the command you see here in red, but be sure and modify the information to show the correct directory that you chose to place your MySQL backup.bat file within. My choice was user slash local. Yours might be something different. However, be sure that you change it to match. And then provide SAMPDB because that is the parameter that it will use to know which database to backup. If you press enter and it runs successfully from the command line, it will create a backup in a format using the day of the week like this. I can review the .sql file with Notepad++. Looks good. Now, let's make the backup an automatic task in Windows using our task scheduler. You need to find the task scheduler, and you can locate it by opening Accessories, then System Tools, and Task Scheduler. Once you've opened it, click Create Basic Task. You will input the name of your task, make it a descriptive name, and a description that's a bit more detailed below. Once you've entered all this information, click Next. It will automatically choose Daily, so we'll leave that as it is, and then click Next again. Here you can change the time frame. If you want it to be 2 in the morning, you can change it to that. I chose 2 a.m. Then I click Next again. On this page, you would select Start a Program. Click Next, and then go and browse to locate your MySQL backup.bat file. That way, we will be able to run that file as part of this task. And finally, type in SAMPDB where it says Add Arguments. That's the parameter. Click Next, and you can review the information. Once you're happy with it, click Finish. When I finished, I also opened the Properties dialog, and I've decided to run it with the highest privileges and run whether or not the user is logged on. That way I've ensured that it will run successfully at 2 a.m. With these settings, it's going to ask me to type in the username and password for the admin for this PC. Now I can scroll down in the Task Scheduler summary and locate the other system scheduled tasks and the MySQL backup. Plus, double-click it to see how it is set up. It shows that it runs at 2 a.m. and that it uses the SAMPDB as a parameter. 
I can also choose to run the task right here and see if it works. By clicking it, it looks like it recreated the file that was created 20 minutes ago in my initial test that I ran from the command line. Now close the task manager and review all the steps necessary to set up an automatic scheduled backup. So, a user named Backup User was created for running the scheduled backup, and it only has backup admin privileges. The next step was to create a folder for storing your backup files. In the next step, you will have created the mysqlbackup.bat file, and you would use the commands that are given to you in this example, plus be sure and change the user and password to log in for your own backup user. Also, you need to change the folder names to make sure they match your system. Here's a quick review of that file and the commands that we used for the mysqlbackup.bat. And the final step was setting up a Windows task to be scheduled and run the bat file daily. And that's how it's done. And now you have a weekly backup scheduled. The backup files will be created and this is the information created in that backup file, just like an export. That concludes our look at how to set up binary logging and scheduled backups. These will be used in your assignment, so please continue with your lesson materials.